What's going on YouTube? JT Javon here and welcome back to another edition of my DC comic book reviews. And in this video, we're going to be talking about DC's Terrors Through Time. That's right, it's spooky season and we're getting some horror-esque stories for their uh, monthly anthology-esque book. Well, not every, they don't do this every single month. Last month they had uh, DC's Saved by the Bell Rev, which was, you know, had some enjoyable stuff in there. Uh, and then we had Terrors for Time, which I think this one's a little bit better. Uh, there's eight different storylines set in this particular book with various writers and artists. I'm gonna go ahead and cover what they are really quickly. Uh, the Phantom Stranger in The Longest Night, written by Paul Levitz, art by Raul Fernandez. Then there's The Super Sons Trick or Treat, written by Shali Fish, art by Luciano Vecchio, and then colors by uh, Gotham City Sirens in The Pueo Promise, written and illustrated by Peter V. Nguyen. Uh, Swamp Thing in Half-Life, written by Zach Thompson, art by Andy McDonald, colors by Mike Spicer, letters by Becca This. Uh, Justice Society of America in the Midnight Hour, written by Charles Skaggs, art by Tom Mandre, colors by Justin Fernandez. Uh, the Green Lanterns in A New Darkness, written by Jeremy Hahn, uh, art and colors by Juan Doe, letters by Andrew Design. Uh, Etrigan in Blood, Lost and Found, written by Matthew Levine, art by Jorge Corona. Color by Sarah Stern. Letters by Travis Lanham. Uh, Damien and Dead Man in The Haunting Hour of Wayne Manor. Written by Tim Seeley. Art by Kelly Jones. Colors by uh, Michelle Madsen. And letters by Rob Lay. So I think I got pretty much all the credits in there. I think Super Sons Wes Abbott did that. Yada, yada, yada. But yeah, so eight different tales. So sometimes with these anthology books, you'll get like a one really good interesting story uh, and then you'll have a bunch of others that don't necessarily line up but here each story is given uh, a okay amount of time i think one in particular was the best and that's the super sons one uh, it just kind of reminded me of how much i missed it but the phantom stranger one was quite good gotham city sirens was kind of weird swamp thing one was okay jsa one was pretty decent the green lanterns one had phenomenal looking artwork but it kind of ended really abruptly uh the etrigan one was decent as well and then the Damien and the Dead Man one kind of ended the book on a little bit of a sort of a downer note. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so here we are at the anthology book. Last year, we got Tales uh, from the Dark Side, which had the Titans uh, telling spooky stories around the campfire. That one was a lot of fun because it had like the Titans and it kind of had like that uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark-esque, like, uh, like a... A framework story uh a, so, like they they were kind of like the framework for the rest of the stories and they were just kind of telling different things and that was pretty fun here we don't really have a framing device like that to tell this thing it's not like a bunch of kids sitting around the campfire telling these tales we're just kind of given these various tales and so the first one was the phantom stranger one and this one was actually quite good and interesting i'm not quite as familiar with the phantom stranger as i am some of the other characters in the dc universe mostly because like when do you ever see phantom stranger storylines in current DC comics. I feel like he's more of a lesser known character, but there is some interesting stuff uh, with his storyline, how he's kind of protecting people like from the dead and stuff. And I'm like, man, I, I kind of want to know more about this guy. Uh, he, he feels more like a classic, like a, like an old school S character uh, that would like I'd like to see showcase more. Artwork is quite good get a bit of his powers and such and it ends on a bit of an interesting note so yeah there was like a few pages there it was pretty entertaining and then uh of course the big highlight of this thing is the super sun storyline trick or treats uh written by shally fish uh with Lucian, with the colors in that so basically damien and john go trick-or-treating and they switch costumes reading this I'll, I'll be honest was better than the one that tomasi wrote last month and dc saved by the bell rev uh it was fun it was entertaining it showcased their dynamic it it completed the story in just the right amount of time and it also just made me miss the super sons a lot reading this thing it's like wow their dynamic is a lot of fun this story is very entertaining uh wouldn't it be great if john kent was still his age and we could still go on stuff like adventures like this all the time but no they they aged up the character and it just has never been the same again Ugh. you had a gold mine with super sons that's why they keep bringing this stuff back to tease people we have all these flashback storylines when they could just fix their mistake and say that the current john is just some sort of clone or something uh with ultraman and all that but you know dc they'll they'll never go back on that or you could have two johns living simultaneously or something like that in the current state of dc but uh unfortunately we're just never gonna get that um because dc just refuses to admit that mistake 
But you know what they did with New 52 Superman? They brought back classic Superman, so who knows? But uh, this one, my favorite story of the bunch, it's just the Super Sons going trick-or-treating uh, to replace his Fortress of Solitude Batcave. They end up in Themyscira. The writing is really on point. It's very funny. It really captures uh, the tone of the characters. And you get to see them showcasing their heroics by saving the Justice League and kind of outwitting these villains. And it's just a bit of fun, and it's very lighthearted. Um, but it's kind of perfect. It's the perfect story for an anthology bit like this. I, I had a lot of fun with it. It's the artwork is great. And it was my favorite part of this whole entire book. Then we get this really bizarre Gotham City Sirens one where they're all conveniently on like vacation in Hawaii. Animals are dying. There's all sorts of cats in that. Like some weird, uh, like God of some sorts is like killing off these cats because cats have like caused a lot of problems apparently. Uh, like some Hawaiian sp like god or something like that and then uh selena's like don't do that uh we'll, we'll just bring all the cats back to gotham for some reason and then it's kind of there so like two million cats were brought to the island blah 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 and then selena kyle just brings them back to gotham i guess i don't know how it works it was just kind of weird and then these other heroes randomly show up at the end for some reason had no like references to them in the story i don't even know who's who in this thing i can't officially confirm but i don't even know why they're even there in the last panel so it was just kind of a weird story uh, Swamp Thing was kind of a post-apocalyptic-esque world and uh, dealing with the environment, the green, and all that other stuff and helping a few people along the way. It was okay. Uh, nothing too special or anything like that. Then we had the JSA storyline where they're fighting, you know, they're doing some JSA stuff in the past. The artwork I really liked here, and it was cool to see the JSA showcase here, which we're going to be seeing them showcased on the big screen in Black Adam next week, so that should be a lot of fun. Ends on kind of a bit of an ambiguous note, um, but we'll see if it ever is followed up on. Uh, probably not. Then we had this one here, this Green Lantern one, uh, where we have this character in that, and there's a red and green one of them like is wielding like a red lantern and a green lantern the artwork and colors are really good in this one like this is visually one of the best looking uh probably the best looking within this whole entire book i just love the way the colors and the styles kind of mesh well together and it feels like a bit of an incomplete ending like it's just so abrupt and it's just like we will stop them and then that's it i felt like I actually wouldn't mind like learning a little bit more about this particular story. I felt like it ended a little bit too abrupt, but it also felt like they were setting the stage for something that I don't know if it's ever going to get followed up on or anything like that. So that's kind of a downer. Then we have um, Jason Blood, Etrigan, and all that kind of fighting some demons in the past, and then he fights this demon like years later, and that's kind of the story. It's just okay. Uh, I like a good Etrigan story, but this one was just all right. And then in the last one was the Tim Seeley one. It was Damien and Dead Man. Uh, basically some, like, spirit or whatever is coming to Wayne Manor, uh, basically after Damien, because Damien killed him and took his soul, uh, really emphasizing, like, the dark past of Damien and such, and even Dead Man, uh, is kind of, like, watching, like, says, like, his soul is marked by, like, the Dark One, uh, like, his, he's already, like, owned or something like that, so a very kind of hopeless storyline right here, uh, just leaving hints at the whole Batman 666 thing, because for whatever reason, they just, can never get over that storyline um I, I, like tim seeley i remember writing like a really weird one in urban legends that was just kind of there so i think he really likes writing about batman 666 so it's not really a big a bit of a hopeful ending or anything like that but then again this is a horror story and they, they like to emphasize more of the dark stuff right here but overall consensus i think the strongest point by far is the super sons one um there's some gorgeous looking artwork uh really in the story too and there's nothing truly awful or anything like that there's just a few bizarre things but this is an anthology thing you got to really temper your expectations usually there's one really really good story and then there's a lot of others that are kind of like filler but this one wasn't half bad i think the super sons one is the one to really read here the phantom stranger one is kind of interesting and uh the green lantern one had some really great looking artwork but i felt like really kind of unsatisfied with the final climax of it all uh it's it just like ah, oh, there was like there just wasn't enough there. Uh, it, I really wouldn't have, I really would have actually liked to have seen that get like a whole like, like full issues worth of time for that story. So that could have been kind of interesting. And then a few others just kind of like, uh, are just kind of forgettable, uh, per se, nothing really awful or anything like that, but
<clears throat> I definitely won't remember them. But then again, I don't have the best memory at a lot of things. Even, uh, I'm trying to read all these like new comics even today. Like I still have like two more that I haven't even like sat down and read yet. This one took a while because it's an 80 page anthology thing. Sometimes you get those days where you have so many comics to read and just <laughs> it, uh, it takes just so much time to kind of get through them all and even like doing videos on it. But sometimes the anthology ones, they actually don't take me as long to review because they're shorter uh, stories and I can just kind of keep like, um, uh, like give vague thoughts on a lot of them without feeling like I'm like cheating the video if that makes sense or whatever but anyways so DC's Terrors of uh Through Time was it better than Tales from the Dark Side I think I, I liked the, the the framing of that one from last year uh but this one I, I think there's some stronger stories in this one the Super Sons one was was quite good and I, it just makes you miss seeing that dynamic. But at the same time, it's like we've had so many flashbacks stuff with the Super Sons. We've pretty much run out of real estate, I, I feel like, with that. And the only way to kind of redeem that is if DC would fix it. But unfortunately, they won't. But they'll still market the Super Sons because they know that they know a lot of people are ticked off like what they did with John. But they're just not going to go back on it unfortunately they're just they're too stubborn to admit like that mistake there so we'll see what happens but anyways i uh i think there was some fun stuff to be had in this one nothing truly mind-blowing or anything like that but i think there was a pretty good time uh overall just kind of reading I, I enjoy reading these anthology books i i temper my expectations in a lot of ways because like with these various anthologies it's not like i'm going to get anything really big mind-blowing or really anything like that these are just 80 page things and just various kind of stories sprinkled in and i can get some creative ones and i can get some ones that are just so mm, so or whatever but at least i get a variety in it and so i appreciate that aspect of it but uh yeah i think that's gonna wrap it up for uh this video and uh tomorrow i will catch up more on some other comic books i just want to kind of like get this one out here and actually sit down and read this week's urban legends and the new batman incorporated book and then move on to uh another comic book that uh is coming out tomorrow so i gotta cover that uh more godzilla comics so the the follow-up to monsters and protectors is coming out so looking forward to talking about that but uh anyways that's all i have to say uh post your comments down below like this video share it with your friends subscribe to the youtube channel for more content all that other fun stuff and i will see you all next time as always take care now bye bye then and i will see you all in the next video peace